floating in anticipation, dancing the slow waltz with gravity while the earth awaits. At ease, I am falling, I cannot wait to touch ground, to touch you. To touch you. like the classics, mm -hmm. disco, the classic house. Then he stopped going out, you know, like pretty much like after the garage closed, like 87, 88. He introduced us to house music, and now he's back into it, so. <laughs> <laughs> Is he also DJ? No, 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 he was more like a dancer. He used to do like the hustle yeah. and stuff like that. So. Has he got a vinyl collection or? Well, when he stopped, he, you know, he's like, I think he sold everything, gave everything away, yeah. so he had no vinyl. So that's why, that, I think that's why we started with CDs, because we had nothing, you know. Yeah. We started getting vinyl, you know, later. The first producer you came to me, who was he? Oh, Dennis. <laughs> Dennis? Uh, as far as they were becoming friends, you know, that yeah. was probably Dennis. Now he's like family. So how did you meet him then? We like, um, still saw my MySpace, and I'm like messaging him, you know, to tell him all that I'm a fan of your work, and, you know, one day he hopes to I gave him a mix of me and my brother, and um, he liked it, he enjoyed it, so he was like, you know what, um, right after I played Shelter, y'all gonna go on. So that was like our first, like, you know, coming Shelter, so he was like startled, and we played, and party was great. And then our future manager happened to be there, and she was like, oh, I wanna, she, she was interested, so now she's our manager, and from then on, us and Dennis been, Real cool. He's been bringing us to the studio. That's actually where we did our rendition. So, right. you know, from then on, there's more to come, you know? And apart from that, you keep on studying. Oh, yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we're on vacation now. We have summer break. So we're going to do, but, you know, we're not, we're, not, we're not gigging from September to December just to focus on yeah. school. I'm going to my second year in college, and he's still in high school. How do you react with the buzz around you? Do you feel the pressure in, in your environment? Not really, because I, you know, wherever I go, I'm just gonna do what I love, whether people like it or not, you know, whether people are saying, you know, you have to play like this, or, you know. When we just consider an honor that we can actually travel to these places, you know. We're traveling to places that, you know, people in their 80s and 90s still have not been to, you know what I'm saying, and still have not seen. So we just consider it a privilege that we can actually see it for our, uh, with our own eyes. Places like Paris, places like Valencia, places like Rome. I was actually surprised because when we first came to Paris to Cheers in December, I was surprised because they knew the they knew the music. You know, we would play classics and they were ah, go crazy and they knew it. You know, and we wasn't expecting that. saying that your kids brought you back to music? I stopped going to, uh, to clubs in, in 1987, 1988. 
Um, I, I married my beautiful wife. We had our first child, which was Steve. I was more interested in being a, a, a father and a provider. Um, as you well know, that that whole scene from those days of the, the middle 70s to the 80s was incredible. I mean, living the that in those times of the garage and the law, it was a drug culture. It, it, it was it was music that was beautiful, but it was also, to be honest, fueled by drugs. A lot of drug use. It was a time where a lot of people kind of lost their way. Um, you know, it, although it was beautiful. I mean, I, I remember s spending nights watching Kenny Carpenter at Studio 54, um, Renee Hewitt at Inferno. I can go on, you know, of course, Larry. It, it was just madness, you know, for many years, but it was fueled by drug use. And by 1987, 1988, I was tired. I, I, you know, I, had, I, I put my hands up, I said, I give up, I can't keep doing this. And at the time, I, I met uh, my wife. She was 19 years old, and I was 25. Very young, but she had a good head on her shoulder. She says, you know, I love you, but I don't love what you're doing to yourself. So I said, I agree. I said, I'll give this all up to, you know, to make you happy and, and to be a husband and a father to your child, and that's what happened. Taking drugs as well? Oh, of course, I was using a lot of drugs. Who didn't use drugs? I don't and, know. And that, well, in, in, in that scene, it was fueled by drugs. It was a lot of drug use. I mean, I, I'm not ashamed of what I was. It's not how you start, but how you finish. Okay? And, you know, this is the end result. You know, thank God to, to, to God first, you know, and, and, and my wife. My biggest fear for my children is, you know, we, we spoke about music being a package. Right. You know, it's not just only playing music and entertaining people with skills. Behind this, there's a lot of variables that come into play. Sure, you know, it's nice to, to, to be able to move a crowd, but I think they, they're young. They don't understand what this is really about yet. He might, he might have a clue. He's the only 15 years old. Um, you know, be, there's so many great DJs that have fallen astray because of um, fame and, and influence, you know, whether it be drugs or women or, or carousing.